Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and man, Forspoken is not looking good. Obviously, the fans are, you know, destroying it. The media is trying to make it sound like all the fans are not the best sort of people, if you know what I mean. And we're getting articles like this. Forspoken is getting review bombed on Metacritic. Now, full disclosure, I've not played Forspoken. I don't plan to. It's because I, I don't care about a whole lot of new modern video games. It's not really a, not not really my thing, unless it's you know cartoony and fun like Sonic the Hedgehog or Pokemon. Uh, of course, you know Resident Evil will be the exception. I'll be getting Hogwarts Legacy when it comes out. But as a general rule, I don't buy brand new seventy dollar triple A games. Uh, you know, I I just wait for them to come down in price if I'm going to get them at all. But I've not heard good things. I, I've heard that. Uh, Basically, it controls like garbage. It just isn't fun to play. And considering a video game is, you know, an interactive medium, that should be the biggest thing. But that's all, you know, criticism I've seen of it on, you know, Twitter, other YouTube videos, the like, is that it's just not a fun game to play. However, this article says it is for a different reason. One that I have heard in passing, but a whole lot less of than I've heard about the controls. Let's go through here. Forspoken is the latest game to be review bombed by a slew of low user scores on Metacritic. Taking a look at the user reviews so far, sorted by most helpful, the majority of these are the top result search results have given the game a 0 out of 10, and by the time of this writing, the game's PS5 version has an average 4.0 user score on the site, while the PC version has an average 2.5 user score. Now at the gate, I don't really see anything super fishy about this because PC reviews, in my experience, are often always lower right out, of, you know, at release because because they've got you know much higher graphics, audio capabilities, people running them on these these epic settings. Yeah, the games aren't necessarily the most optimized for that right out the gate, and updates and patches need to be pushed and whatnot. So for the PC version to have such a low score, to me it makes sense at least in you know comparison to other games. Now a 2.5 out of 10. Maybe, yeah, that, that's extremely low, but being lower than the console version makes sense. And I'm not going to jump to assuming that it's getting review bombed just because it has a low score. Maybe it's just not a good game. Like I said, everyone on Twitter is talking about how it's not fun. One post I saw said it took them about three hours to get used to the controls. That's a long time to sit there and just figure a game out before you even start having like legitimate fun with it. Low Forsaken user reviews complained about phrase dialogue. Now, like I said, I've heard this complaint, but... Who's to say if this is the majority? In fact, I have Metacritic pulled up. We're going to look at some of the reviews here in a bit. But I want to at least give this article, you know, its credence before I just say it's bunk. Scouring through the multiple user reviews on Metacritic that are in the red, they all have similar complaints. Most believe the writing is poor, particularly for the protagonist Frey, who some find irritating, unlikable, and crass. They also found the combat shallow, the open world empty, the graphics disappointing, with some claiming that there are some downgrades from the game's prior trailers. All of these sound like a good reason to rate a game low for me, especially if it's going to be a $70 game. Like, okay, an unlikable main character. Yeah, that's 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 not good. This is the character you're going to be following for a 70, 80, 90, however many hour long game. Yeah, I, I, I would want the character to be someone that I can, you know, get down with, enjoy, w want to be. Um, so th that's, you know, strike number one, obviously. If, if the combat's shallow, that goes back to the gameplay thing I was saying. The open world empty. Well, people had that same criticism about, you know, Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, the open world seemed kind of empty and lifeless. And in and, and Sonic, yeah, it's, it's one thing. It's a Sonic game. Us Sonic fans have learned to live with bad games. But in major AAA titles, especially from Square Enix, I can see that being a big problem for people that, you know, have... Like, Final Fantasy XV, how many years ago was that game at this point? Like, six, seven years? That open world was bustling and beautiful. So, if you're downgrading from a game that's like six to seven years old, yeah, I, I see that disappointing. You know, the, finding the graphics disappointing. Once again, AAA game, and if you're getting bad graphics... Is it worth the 70 bucks? Already, they've given several reasons why a 2.5 would be justifiable, but they're still going to say it's, you know, review bombing. The wave of low user scores isn't too much of a surprise that many players were already mixed in the Forspoken demo. Okay, so they're mixed on the demo. This also... Where's the review bombing? It seems like you're giving ample reasons for people to not like this game. Given that the recent trailer for the game received more dislikes than likes on various YouTube channels, the comments and the negative reviews also echo some of the same issues from critics too, with the PS5 game currently standing at a 68 Metascore. Metacritic has recently changed its user review policy by not allowing any user scores to be submitted until a game has been out for at least a day or so. That soft embargo was lifted yesterday, allowing for the flow of low scores. The flood of low scores. 
That said, about one third of the user reviews on Metacritic are actually positive, similar to our review. Oh, oh, so all of a sudden you're the you're the arbiter of what makes a good review. What? Someone gave it lower than an eight out of ten? Well then they must be review bombing it, they're racist. They gave the game an 8 out of 10. Several of them believe the complaints are overblown and that the game's traversal system is fluid and fun. Yeah, well, you guys are effectively paid shills if I had to wager a guess. Let's look at some of these reviews. Alright, so here we are with the PC version. 2.1 user score. This game is actually a 7.5 or so. Cause yeah, I'm going to read the high ones too, by the way. This game is actually 7.5 or so, considering the high requirements and graphics downgrade. Everything else is great. I like the story. The conversations between Frey and Bracelet are funny and looks great and is the best experience I've had when it comes to mobility. The 10 is because most reviews have nothing to do with the game itself and people directly never played it. The PS5 version has 69 points and is much worse than the PC version. So here is review bombing, but in the opposite direction. Homeboy here gave this a 10, straight up saying it should be 7.5, but he's trying to offset the low scores. That's not an honest review. That's not how you should review something. Like, I don't care if you're, rev you're review bombing for negative or positive. It shouldn't be being done. And this this perfect 10 right here is openly saying this game is not a perfect 10. He's skewing these reviews. Here's another 10. The game is fantastic. One of the best and innovative combat systems you can think of with the best exploration system in years. Everything flows together nicely and looks spectacular when it does. The story is actually interesting, which surprised me. And Frey was actually endearing. Well... I mean, that goes against everything we just read in the previous article, but maybe it's true. Who knows? All right. We got a two. Green reviews are paid reviews. Bad game with bad narrative. Boring as hell, etc. See? I don't like this review. This does not review the game. It just says it's bad and everyone else is wrong. That's not how you review something. Here we have a zero. This game is nothing like it was shown in the trailers. It is literally a night and day difference. This is a classic bait and switch, and the fact that reviews were held until after the game released is absolutely criminal. We should have known about these issues before spending 70 on the game. Shame on Square Enix and Sony for this deception. Now that is a fair review in my opinion. If this game is trash and people don't know and they go out and buy it day one because reviews aren't allowed because you know everyone is not able to share their opinions on Metacritic or wherever people go for game reviews, that is criminal. And if the game is a bait and switch, if it is a night and day difference, the people who would have bought the game, they would have found out, oh man, this is nothing that is advertised, and th then they wouldn't have purchased it. So yes, th this, this zero to me, justifiable. Another zero. Cringe, super cringe, and not nearly enough to describe the cringe pile of cringe, you know, s that happens when you suddenly decide to appeal to a global audience that ironically doesn't even exist. All right, so once again, not a fan of this review. They're giving a complete, they're giving a flat zero for it being cringe. They don't talk about the dialogue. They don't talk about the gameplay. I, I don't agree with that. So I would consider, yeah. Yeah, maybe this is not... I don't want to just jump to the idea that it was review-bombed. Maybe the guy did play it. But I am going to say this is a bad review. Now, I will say that this individual is correct about appealing to a global audience. We talked about that in the last video. Square Enix has started saying they're going to appeal to a global audience, which I think is a mistake. People like Square Enix games because of how intrinsically Japanese it is. Uh, but that being said, you know, maybe this will be a wake-up call for Square Enix. They, they'll try this once. It's experimental. They won't do it again. Zero, one of the worst games I've ever played. It's a lackluster world, frustrating controls. See, there we go. I've, I've, I've heard the controls were awful. Unresponsive, unsatisfying combat. Once again, more control issues. Old Assassin's Creed graphics, pale textures and colors for an adventure game, and poor optimization for the cringe and not interesting story. Feminism and awareness of literally nothing that has been enough for me to not look at the game with anticipation and have fun. So, I, I can't, I mean, it seems like they obviously played it. I would consider this a good review. This political stuff here near the end, I do think, you know, warrants criticism. I think it definitely needs to be there, assuming they actually played the game. So, yeah, I would consider this a legitimate review. It ain't good, Chief. Lame combat, seriously unlikable characters, and incoherent story, all with a very poor outing by Square. Well, once again, that one actually talks about the game. Doesn't just call stuff cringe. This game is game of the year. Worst of the worst. Why the management thinks this is a good game... This is uh, in, in Spanish, so I have no idea what it says. Here we go. This review contains spoilers. Childish story, boring and unlikable character, empty world. Okay, I mean, they gave it a one. The game is bad, really bad. Seriously, I don't even know how many days you need to live without any game or how young you have and, and low your experience in video games must be to provide this game to a 10 out of 10 or simple take pleasure playing it. Are you guys kidding me? A game developed by Final Fantasy 15, which have better graphics engine made only for next-gen console GPUs who would have liked 
ten percent. I, I I won't lie. This is very very poorly written, but they are getting their point across. It was so poor performance anyway, and it looks like the game from seventh gen consoles. Gameplay like free to play game for mobile. Jesus, this is real scum. Don't buy it. Don't even look at it. All right. So I will say. This is uh, uh, effectively has no political pandering to it. They're not saying, oh, it's woke, go oh, black female character. They're just saying this game is, it's awful. It performs poorly. Like, that's, yeah, I mean, it seems like it's worth a zero, uh, a zero to me. Although I would say, hey, homeboy, you gotta, you gotta work on your grammar. Maybe English isn't your first language. I don't know, but this was, this was abysmal. Wow, I've seen the exact same comment on the game word for word by different accounts on here, giving it a 10. Review bombing clearly works in favor of bias. Really? I mean, you didn't review anything, so it seems like you're review bombing. You gave it a one. You didn't say what the game was doing. You didn't say if you played it. So I, I think that's the pot calling the kettle black. But yes, it does seem like there is opposite review bombing going on. Uh, so I, I, I would absolutely be inclined to believe that. We saw it happen with The Last of Us TV show. While that did turn out to be good by most accounts, that's fair. It had a 100% audience score with 200 reviews two hours before the show came out. Yeah, that's some positive review bombing. So, I'm not saying it didn't happen here. Another below average game with a dull story and uninspiring open world. Combat is more or less fun, but with a limited number of enemies become boring very soon. Too overpriced for what it offers. For an indie game with 50% price tag, after some performance optimization, it could be an 8 out of 10. But for an overpriced AAA, it's a safe skip slash refund. And here we're sitting at a 4. I think that is brilliant. I think that is, that is a nice, fair average. At the end of the day, whether it was review, review bombed or not, really doesn't seem to matter. The game is bad. Here we have a 5. Square Enix should be doing much better than this because this game is another disappointment of theirs and, I will not, and it will not help their record with us. So yeah, I mean, zeros, ones, zeros, ones. Um, I, I don't know if this is all review bombing or not. Here we have another four. Maybe people were just really hyped for this game. Maybe people are angry at Square Enix. There, there could be a whole lot going on. But I don't know if I would call it review bombing. I also will say there's definitely a fair share, both in the negative and the positive, of reviews that are not honest, that is political pandering. And I'm not a fan of that on the left or the right. I'm not a fan of it for the good or the bad. I want people's nice, honest opinions. At the end of the day, this game sounds like a skip. It really does. All the legitimate reviews talk about poor performance, talk about boring or bad combat, talking about an empty open world, talking about graphics. I mean, all the reviews that are negative that talk about the game do talk about it negatively, or at least the vast majority of them. To me, that's a good enough reason to skip this game. So I do think that maybe, just maybe, this is a, a, a bit of an overreach. Maybe it's not being review bombed, maybe it's a bad game, and there's also going to be some trolls in there. Well, guess what? Trolls are everywhere. It's part of being on the internet. Get over it. You're not, you're, you're not going to beat them. In fact, trolls troll for a reason, because it works. So basically, skip this game. Don't, don't buy it. Don't support Square Enix. Hopefully they've learned their lesson about going global. But that's just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments below, or you can find me on Twitter at Bolt the Word. And hey, maybe you enjoyed this game. If so, let me know that as well. But that's all I've got for this one. Check out the back catalog and please subscribe. I've got more videos on video games, Magic the Gathering, movies, Star Wars, you name it. If it's been in the news, then you've got it here in the Nerdosphere. But until next time, this has been Words of Paradise.